Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am sharing a birthday card using the pick out stamp set from Hello Bluebird as well as the happy birthday words die. Now I love this stamp set because every occasion is inside of this set and today I'm going to use this pick that is holding the balloon. Now first of all um, I am going to do a one layered card. Uh, when it comes to the critter, I'm not going to use the matching dies. If, however, you want to use this image, I would suggest to first die cut it and then use the negative to keep the die cut in place and then stamp out your image because the balloon and the string, well, <laughs> just to have it um, stamped out correctly, I think that can be really handy. But for today, I'm doing an online coloring card. Um, I'm going to really simple color this image in. I'm using the Incom 3 fade out no line coloring detail ink and then I will be using my Copic markers to color everything in. Now before starting with the coloring I already noticed that I prefer adding the details ahead of time. I have this Copic multi-liner which is really handy. Um, from time to time when you start Copic coloring on this fade out ink you want be able to see the details at the end. It's not always, and I don't know exactly <laughs> what the reasoning is behind it, but the idea is to have it no line coloring, so it's good that you cannot see <laughs> the details anymore or the stamped image. Um, but just do not lose the perfect positioning of the eye. Uh, in this case, I decided to add it first. Now concerning the coloring of this pig, it's actually the first time that I'm using E15 as my darkest color. Um, but I wanted to have a bit more um, of shadow or an extra dimension uh, on this pig. Uh, normally I use E13, E11, E01, E00. I will still use it. But I saw on my hex chart that this color actually is a really nice color to combine with it as being a darker color. So I'm testing it out today and actually I love it. Also I often use E18 with E15 so I think if I would have wanted to have another darker color to add maybe a bit more uh, definition on some areas then I think E18 would have worked as well but just really softly. Not too much. <laughs> because I don't want a brown pig, which can also go, because there are lots of colors when it comes to pigs. Now, as you see me doing as well, I am doing quite some flicking today. Um, from time to time, I prefer it. Also, if I am struggling with blending, um, this really helps me, flicking with my markers. I think even in the beginning, when I started with Copic coloring, I didn't find this easy at all. And the flicking was one of the only ways I could blend. But truly one of the only ways. So now I just vary depending on what I'm coloring. But also doing some flicking can help with giving that softer feel. Or um, the fur of some of, cr some of the critters that you are coloring in. So I'm just doing that. This paper as always. Transotype perfect coloring paper. Um... So I'm now onto my second layer, trying to add some more depth, some more definition and also adding a bit more shadows than I might have the first layer. So I'm doing that, I'm working my way from darkest to lightest as always. Um, but if you prefer having a base coat first then that's always handy. I just think also with the no line coloring um, to not lose the lines I think it's also handy to have first your darkest um, but I that's a personal opinion uh, but if I would color everything first with my lightest one I think I would lose some of the details and now with adding first shadows I keep the details and then I smoothen it out with the rest. So initially for the balloon I thought of using reds and I think that I will 
hopefully if I find the time in the future I will make a card with this image with a red balloon I think because it's just darling uh, it also reminds me of Winnie the Pooh and I love Winnie the Pooh so <laughs> well a red balloon I need it I want it um, also you might saw it on Instagram I bought a lot more stamps from Hello Bluebird from the latest release. I also still have to play with a lot of the stamps from the winter release. Um, well, living in Belgium, it takes some time to travel to me the, the product. So I was a bit too late last year. Um, so I have a lot of gorgeous goodies from Hello Bluebird that still need a lot of attention. Um, so I hope that I will get to that. I also made some other cards already with the Hello Bluebird stamps and I hope to share it as soon as possible with you all. Um, but know that it's coming. Um, I need to add it and then life gets in the way and then I have some, some, well, some things planned already or some things prepped already for you. So we will see when I can share all the rest. But know that I have some more items that I really want to use and that I really want to share with you. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will happen soon. So here onto the balloon, there are many ways to color in your balloons or any rounded images. Um, for this one, I decided to keep like the other edge um, free to use with a lighter color. You don't need to. I don't. Do that all the time it depends today I just left the border to <laughs> keep it a bit lighter now about the happy birthday there are many ways again to add this you can overlap it you can do like me and just add it underneath each other um, you can add it with pattern paper with color paper you can do something with the white background and the happy birthday I am going to reuse the yellows that I used for the balloon to color in the happy birthday. So I'm first going to cut it out out of Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper again and then I will use my Copic markers to color it in. So to make it a bit easier for myself I'm going to inlay the happy birthday again using some purple tape to keep everything in place and then I will take my markers because otherwise well your fingers will be inked up for sure or your mat or whatever you're coloring on um, so to prevent that as well as just keep it easy for yourself it's always handy if you just put it back for a bit color it in and then place everything now the happy I thought of also doing it with a bit of shading um, well I don't know if it was a good idea I like the end result but I I don't know if it's that much of an added value uh, but I decided to add shadows on the left part of everything um, well like here and then blend it out like I did with the balloon and I know that I didn't zoom in but I'm going to do <laughs> that really soon I realized it just a bit too late um, but you know the idea I'm not doing anything fancy I'm just adding some color and I will also do this twice um, again it's transotype perfect coloring paper and I prefer my blending when I have at least two layers And I thought about using the lightest color again, but I didn't like it. So I just went over those edges that I left white as well, like the balloon with the yellow 17. Here I'm onto my second layer. And then just quickly finishing it off. Now for the birthday I'm not going to do the same. It's a script. But I did decide to use two colors. So I'm just using the two lightest now. 
I was contemplating first of just leaving it like this but didn't like it adding the other color so that it also matched with the happy and then I could start placing everything on top of my panel so I'm going to remove the purple tape and release all of the letters and words and then I will place one of the letters using my T-square ruler so that I'm sure that that one is aligned straight and then I will use the negative of the happy to get all the other letters in the right place and also straight. So here I just tested whether the Y was also going to be on my card. And I'm going to add these using some liquid glue. And then all of the rest. Now for the birthday, since it's a really whimsical birthday, I'm not going to use the negative. You can if you want to, but I really wanted to make sure that I could see where I was placing the birthday. And sometimes when you use the negative, it's really hard to see where it's going to end up. Um, so that's why I just decided to add it myself using some liquid glue. Also, as you saw here, you can add the birthday slightly on top of the happy and it will still be visible. Um, especially if you have some um, contrasting colors that would really help as well. I decided to add a tiny shadow <laughs> um, at the feet of my pig. Just really softly. I'm not doing anything fancy because this is still something that I, I'm not really confident about adding sort of shadows. Um, and to just make sure that I still liked it at the end, I added a tiny shadow. So I'm adding the birthday. You can use the negative again to add the tail if you want to, but you don't need to. Um, it's right on top of the eye. <laughs> and I'm just using this acrylic block to flatten the sentiment out as well as to just keep it there while the liquid glue is drying. And then I'm going to add this panel on a card base. To finish the card, I'm going to add lots of glossy accents. As you know, there is a balloon. <laughs> and most of the time, when I have a balloon, I am going to add glossy accents on top of it. So I'm going to do that. And since the happy has like those bigger letters, I'm also going to add glossy accents on top of the happy. Now that took me a while. Um, <laughs> Just so you know, uh, to go into all the corners and such, uh, you can always use a needle or something um, really thin to help you spread the glossy accents into the tiny areas. Or if your glossy accent is blocked, like mine was, you can just use some sort of a needle and just poke it through and you are ready to go again. And when the glossy accent was on there, I actually contemplated whether I was going to add some embellishments. Now, I didn't do that because I thought about the simplicity of this card and at the same time all those glossy accents. Well, it was gorgeous enough. Um, but if I would have added anything, then I probably would have added some sort of bubbles. Um, and most likely iridescent ones. Uh, but I didn't do that, as I said before. I'm just doing the glossy accents and I think when it dries, I just love, love, love how that looks. So shiny. So once that's on there, I'm going to show it a bit more up close. And then as always, you have some of the photos that I took afterwards when everything was dry. So this is my first card using Hello Bluebird. And I hope that many more will follow in the near future. Um, I will be crafting with uh, the sets, of course, because they are amazing. I want to thank you all for stopping by and taking your time to watch this video. I hope that you like the end result. Um, you can always give this video a thumbs up if you did. I would truly appreciate that. So thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing day. And I will be back soon with some new crafty inspiration. Bye!